start out by using the thinnest zucchinis possible. They have the fewest seeds and they're usually young, tender and more flavorful. Cut the ends off and place them on a scale. Place a cloth onto the cutting board and grate all the zucchini onto the cloth. You could probably use a food processor for this if you're doing a lot. Wrap the zucchini up in the towel and squeeze the towel to get some of the water out. You don't want to squeeze it like wringing it or get all the water out. You just want to get the visible water out. That juice can be a little bit bitter and we have other things in the recipe to make it moist. Weigh chopped or whole walnuts and put them onto foil or directly in a pan. Spread them out and put them in a hot oven for five to 10 minutes. Make sure you set a timer. It goes by so fast and you don't want to burn the nuts. After the nuts are toasted, fold them up in the tin foil or put them in a plastic bag. Then use a mallet, rolling pin, or anything heavy to crush them into smaller bits. Now, starting with your dry ingredients, put the bowl onto the scale and zero out the scale. Add the flour. Put three large eggs in some warm water if they're not already room temperature. Then add the salt, followed by the baking powder and the baking soda. Finally, we'll add just a hint of cinnamon. And then we'll stir the whole thing up really well and set it aside. There, you can hardly see the cinnamon in there. Now, with the second bowl on the scale, and the scale is zeroed out, we're gonna do the wet ingredients. Start by cracking the two eggs together, dumping the egg into a glass bowl and examining it for shells, blood spots, or impurities. Do the same thing with the second egg. When it comes to the third egg, don't crack it against the edge of the bowl. That'll just push eggshell into the egg. Always crack it on a flat surface. Mix the eggs up just enough so you can't see the whites anymore. Add a pure, tasteless vegetable oil, the white sugar, and then the brown sugar, zeroing out the scale before adding each ingredient. Now add a good quality, pure vanilla. I always pour vanilla over the bowl, so if any spills, it goes into the bowl. A little extra vanilla is extra good. Even though I'm measuring by weight, I'm using the teaspoon so I don't accidentally pour way too much in, which is easy to do from the bottle. Then stir the whole thing up until the sugar looks completely mixed in with the egg. And then we're finally ready to add the zucchini in, using the scale to measure the correct amount. Mix the zucchini in, and because we drained it, it shouldn't change the consistency of your batter at all. Now for sour cream. You won't see it in other recipes, and you won't taste it at all in the finished bread but it will replace the water moistness we took out of the zucchini and takes your bread to another level. Mix the sour cream in to incorporate it completely. And now is a good time to stick your finger in and test the batter for amazing flavor. Spray or oil all your pans before you mix the flour in. We don't want that batter sitting around. Add and mix the flour a little at a time stirring until you can't see any flour before you add more flour. Don't pour it in all at once. Don't mix it too much or mix it with a whip or you will be beating the gluten out of the flour and your bread will be heavy. Once the flour is mixed into the wet ingredients, the baking powder and baking soda will activate. Bubbles will start to form in the batter, so we want to get it into the oven as soon as possible. This recipe also makes six mini loaves, which make great tasty gifts and travel well. Fill each mini loaf about halfway. Then go back and add a little more batter to each one to make them evenly full, but don't fill them over three quarter full. Another great thing about making mini loaves is you can make some with nuts and some without by adding nuts to some of the loaf pans right before baking instead of adding the nuts to the batter. 
Take something thin like a small knife or skewer and lightly stir the nuts to distribute them through the batter. Put them in the oven and set the timer for 50 minutes. Check them when the timer goes off by sticking a thin object in the center of one and seeing if it comes out dry. Let them cool down for 10 minutes to a half an hour and take them out of the pan while they're still warm. These are delicious as warm muffins, but best after cooling to room temperature and even better the next day. With whipped cream cheese, they make heavenly little sandwiches, earning the name Disappearing Zucchini Bread.